Paul Hudson is the CEO of Sanofi, a $100 billion roughly market cap pharma company based in France. He's not a scientist. He earned a degree in economics and learned to collaborate in teams and empower the scientists to pursue better solutions. He says that even when he was in college in Manchester, he was eager to get to work. Like everybody else, I was trying to make ends meet. I mean, the, the reality was I also worked nights at a gas station, you know, trying to make sure I could cover my costs. You know, it's okay. I spent the summers digging holes in, uh, on construction sites to make sure I had enough cash for, for the following term. I mean, I did stuff that most people do. And to be honest, I, I, I feel now I'm better for it, for having had those experiences. But I was, I did them willingly and I, and, you know, it was a good time to be around. There weren't smartphones. So, you know, it was, uh, everybody was very present all the time. And uh, uh, no, I, I, I enjoyed my time at college, like I said, but I was, I was happy to get working. And now under his leadership, Sanofi is working on ways to use software to give it an edge in a business defined by long shots. The hope is that advanced analytics will help scientists figure out characteristics of the patients most likely to benefit from drugs in development, boosting the odds of approval. When you start off with a drug and, you know, let's say it's eight, nine years from launch, you've got maybe a eight, nine, ten percent chance that it will work eventually. And that rises to like 65 percent when you're in the last clinical work in the last two or three years. Only 65, right? Not 100. And um, what we believe is using AI, we can't change the, the we will change the structure of the drug chemically. That's other work. But let's take let's follow this example. We believe that using big data, we can improve our chance of success by finding patients of a profile that will disproportionately get a benefit. And that's good for them. It's good for governments who want to invest wisely every dollar or dime. And it's good for us because it means that it's a success. But we're just, we're not trying to go from will it work or won't it work? We're trying to just stack the deck in favor of the patient. And, you know, and that's that's four or five, six, 10 percent. It's not more than that. But that's OK. Managing those percentages. He's based in Europe. So I also talked to him about the economic instability that's come from inflation and the war in Ukraine. He said there's the potential for enterprise technology to amplify workers impact and help people get creative and save energy during what's expected, guys, to be a challenging winter. When he's talking about using A.I. to better the odds of the drug actually getting through the process, does that mean changing who participates in the That's trial, right. uh -huh. actually finding candidates that will actually respond well to the drug. Exactly. Huh. So there's work on both sides, on the drug itself and on who the drug is targeting. And it's just, it's just those percentages of being good enough to have the right kind of benefit for the right people. He, he's had a long pedigree in the, in the pharmaceutical business. He was at Novartis before he came mm -hmm. uh, to Sanofi. Uh, did you talk to him about why he would move from one company to another? Is it, is it merely the money? Is it the scale? Is it that, that, uh, that, that uh, uh, Sanofi has a more interesting pipeline than Novartis or what? Well, he talks a lot about opportunity for impact, right? right? Where can he have the biggest impact on being able to bring people together and point them in the right direction? He also talked a bit about COVID and where Sanofi fell short right, in mm -hmm. coming up mm -hmm. uh, with vaccines. But, but then how they move forward, learn from that, uh, and get better in the future. What is the next sort of technology that they're looking to, to try and use? Well, there are several. I, I asked specifically about AI, but mm -hmm. also about enterprise tech, because with mm -hmm. this remote work challenge and also the challenge of saving energy in Europe now oh. during the winter, right, enterprise technology actually helps people work remotely uh, without the same kind of office footprint, and that should help, you know, Europe overall, possibly. So there's this interesting, based on what's happening, even in energy markets, opportunities for technology to be a help. All right, John, thank you.